Hello everyone, welcome to another time with the Entitastic Tutor. And today's tutorial, we'll be talking about the use of library, the continuation of the series we began. And today, we'll be speaking of classification of library resources. GS2104 is the course, the use of library, the course title, and this is the volume 5. With this being said, Let's hop right into it. So we have classification of library. Now here is our table of content. So we have the introduction. We have the internet learning outcome. We have the importance of library classification. We have our types of library classification schemes. And we have the conclusion. We have summary. And that will be that for the table of content. So we have the introduction. For the effective use of library resources, organization of such resources is important. For easy retriever, one way of organizing library resources is by cataloging. Now, to explain the word cataloging, cataloging is just one way library sets up their resources for easy navigation. The setting of materials and resources in different boxes in different shelf, labeled and tagged for easy identification. You have learned the functions and the different types of catalogs. Now, the focus shall be on the way library resources are organized, which is classification. Classification is the act of grouping like documents together, basically according to. Now, to explain what classification is, classification is the process whereby the library charged with the responsibility of grouping like documents, similar documents together according to their subject content. To get that clearly, classification is the process of grouping, taking, putting documents that are like, documents that are similar, documents that might be categorized, for example, where we have medicals medical documents in a shelf engineering documents in a shelf architectural resources in a shelf those excuse me those are grouping and those are classifications so we have internal learning outcome by the end of this unit you will be able to source for information using different library classification scheme. So we have, that being said, let's move to the next, move to the next, next phase. Why library classification? You might be wondering, why library classification? Now, to answer this question, it's numerous books acquired in the library must be arranged to increase their utility to the optimum level, the necessary for resources in the library, resources in the sense that materials in the library are utilized to the optimum level. Users will find it difficult to locate a document if there is no arrangement of any sort. Um, before we go further, I need to apologize. Probably you must have noticed difference in my voice. I am I have been very ill for quite some while now, for quite, I've been very ill for about three days now, and that's why I'm not today. I've been coming forth for me, but I'm back on my feet and I'm recuperating very fast. So I, I must apologize uh, for the slight difference in my voice. So let's just head back into it. The library just lacks time and would not be patient to go through all the library resources because it needs just one document. You can imagine for someone, for a student or a library user who needs just one document. Saving time, energy and strength, classification does it. Classification in the sense that for an architecture student, for a student of architecture looking for a resource, just go straight to the shelf where architectural books and resources are and scan through Probably it arranged alphabetical order 
or numeric order and just pick whatever he, or she wants. So even for the librarian, it will be difficult to search through all documents to get a required one. Due to the varying forms and purpose of document, it becomes essential to arrange them systematically on shelves. A user would be a better he would be in a better position to keep to help himself if shelves are provided with an adequate number of shelf guides. Number in the sense that navigating through the shelves, they are numbered. If they are numbered, it makes the navigation easy. He would thereby require less assistance from the reference staff. That's that for that. So we'll move to the next phase. In a situation where the library collection is unclassified, library guides will be useless to users and users will feel lost. So, in order to provide an effective reference service, it is essential that the documents are arranged systematically. The systematic arrangement of documents in the library is necessary. This would also help save the time of the, of the reference staff. The reference staff is someone who who works in library, who when an assistant to the users of library, now and as well as that of the readers themselves, the purpose of library classification is to create a system out of disorder and provide a comprehensive view of the documents on a given subject. The purpose of the library classification is to create a system out of disorder create a system that works out of this order and provide a comprehensive view of the document on a given subject. It's very much correct, very much true. So we have, this leads to maximum use of collection towards satisfying the law of library science as formulated by S.R. Raghunathan. These, these lanes are as follows. Books are, of, books are for use and that's the first law. Every reader is book. Every reader is book. That's the second law. Every book its reader. That's the third law. Save the time of the reader. Fourth law. Save the time of the staff. For, excuse me. Save the time of the staff. Corollary to the fourth law. So we have that. The fire library is a growing organization. As the fifth law. So that we have the five law of S.R. Raghunathan. S.R. Raghunathan has the five law. So we have the basic aim of li librarianship is to bring users in contact with a specific document or information out of the various techniques that a librarian may adopt to achieve this. Library classification is one of them. It helps to organize documents and information so that users can use source of information effectively. That is the main point. That is the conclusively what that is what library classification means conclusively. So we have that. Move to the next step, next phase. Types of library classification scheme. One, we have Library of Congress classification scheme as LC. We have the way decimal classification scheme. We have universal decimal classification UDC. We have excuse me, Bliss classification scheme. We have colon classification scheme. Excuse me. We have Moyes classification scheme. So that's those are classification scheme of library. So we have Library of Congress classification scheme. That's the LC, Library of Congress Classification Scheme. Most academic libraries use Library of Congress Classification Scheme. For example, National Poor University of Nigeria Library uses this scheme. Library of Congress Classification Scheme consists of 21 classes A to Z. The scheme is based on the collection of Library of Congress in the United States. It was mixed notation. It was mixed notation. This means that it uses both it uses both letters and numbers. That's what it means by mixed notation. It uses both letters and 
numbers. It also uses cutter. It also uses cutter numbers to further specify a document. Cutter numbers are special numbers given to individual authors. Just to guard again, cutter numbers are special numbers given to specific authors. Now, it says the notation and cutter numbers together form the class mark or call number of a book. So we have that as that. We have the main classes of LC. We have a general work, A general works, B BJ philosophy and philosophy, philosophy and psychology, BL, BL, BX religion, and we have C auxiliary science history. So we have we have that and we have them like that. We have as you can see we have C D E G H. We have K L and so on and so forth. So we have them. We have PQ. We have PQ part one. We have PQ part two. It lists Spanish and Portuguese as you can see. Stuff for that. A typical book classified using the Library of Congress classification scheme will have its class mark or call number as follow: the title, understanding politics, ideas, institutions, and uses. Also, Thomas, this is just a, a typical example of what a book using Library of Congress classification. Now, class mark call number is going to be J A slash lc class mark we have 66 and okay we have that as that the class mark is found on the spine the spine is in between the front and the back page of the book every book in the library or at the left upper side of the book so we have that as that we move to the next one which is daily decimal classification among the modern classification scheme, Dewey Decimal Classification DDC is the oldest. It is also widely used, especially in school libraries. You may come across very few academic libraries that uses Dewey Classification Scheme to organize their collections. Unlike the Library of Congress Classification, Dewey Classification is pure and not mixed. It's usually, it uses only numbers for for that specificity of subject terms, it employs decimals. We have that as that. The main classes of Dewey Decimal Classification. The main classes of Dewey Decimal Classification, we have 000, coming up with number, generalities, 100, philosophy and psychology. We have religion, as you can see, numbers, 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 numbers more of Dewey. So we have each main class is divided into 10 divisions and each division into 10 sections. For example, the main class 600 technology applied science can into bracket can be further subdivided or subdivided into should be subdivided into another 10 subclasses as follow. And so we have 600 to 609 technology applied and we have that and, and we have them as that. We have 650, 660, 680. Again, each of these ranges number range of numbers can be further subdivided into 10, e.g., 610 to 619, medical science, 610, 11, 12, 13, 14, 615, 616, 617, 618, and 619. So we have that as that. Each of these topics may be further divided into more specific subjects. Areas a decimal point is used after the first three digits to separate the specific subject. For example, 612 one psychology can be further subdivided so into 10 as follows. Okay, 612, 612.1, 612.3. Those are the subdivisions. Subdivisions, yes, as we said earlier. So that's that for that. We move to the next page. So we have the Universal Decimal Classification, that's UDC. Universal Decimal Classification is based on the fifth edition of Dewey Decimal Classification. This classification scheme is widely used in French speaking countries of North Africa, in Spain, and Latin America, and throughout Eastern Europe. 
In the English speaking world, it is used by special libraries and most especially in those with strong emphasis on technological interest. These are many there are many similarities between this DC and UDC. For instance, the ten main classes of DDC are D retained in UDC. However, class four language class was merged with class eight literature class in UDC. We have that as that. Example of UDC notations 903 prehistory antiquities. We have 903. We have hyphen 12 hunting and fishing cultures. We have that and we have it as that. We have that. We have them listed on the screen. So we have Bliss classification. Who oh, Bliss classification is also called bibliography classification, which is BC. It was devised by Henry Hevelin Bliss in 1935. Henry Hevelin Bliss in 1935 devised the Bliss classification. The system is utilized most extensively in British libraries. It consists of 35 main classes, consisting of 9 numerical and 26 alphabetical classes. It has a notation system that utilizes uppercase and lowercase romance letter. Arabic numerals for common subdivisions. Each main class and each class subclass is fully faceted. So we have that as that. Move to the next phase. The outline of Bliss Classification is as follows 2 slash 9, General Lear, Phenomena, Knowledge, Information, Skin, Science, and Technology. So we have that. We have them listed on the screen. They have listed on the screen Geology, okay, Biology, Chemistry, so on and so forth. That as that. So we have the colon classification. The colon classification, which is a CC, has a set of main classes that are divided into facets. All facets are regarded as manifestations of five fundamentals. Categories, namely, A, space, B, energy, C, matters, D, personality. And we have that as that. Main classes of colon classification. So we have A generally, generalia, we have U area study, we have W general personal study, and we have them as that still on the screen. We have them listed on the screen. Then listed on the screen. And that is that for main classes of colon classification. So we have the Moy classification scheme. Most academic libraries uses, use Moy's classification scheme for classifying specifically their law materials. Basically, these schemes help to remove the shortcomings observed in class K law, the Library of Congress classification scheme. Main classes of Moyes classification scheme. So we have KA, that is this jurisprudence. We have the KB, general and comparative law, and we have them listed on the screen. On the screen, we have them listed on the screen. That starts for that. So we have our conclusion. You must have just concluded a study on library classification scheme. This is to enable you to understand the system of coding and organizing library materials. Without this knowledge, you may find it difficult to understand and use the catalogs of several libraries. Thank you very much. Thank you for sticking out to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching and please if you are yet subscribed to this channel, like and subscribe, comment below, share to your friends and more interesting video and educative informative videos like this is coming up and as soon as they are loaded, YouTube will send you a notification. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.
Bye-bye.